Hi everyone, apa khabar semua? I hope everyone is doing fine. Hari ini kita akan sambung belajar tentang penjodoh bilangan. Hari ini kita akan sambung belajar tentang penjodoh bilangan. Today we will continue studying about noun classifier or in Malay we call it as penjodoh bilangan. If you have no idea about what is penjodoh bilangan in Malay, head over to the first series of the lessons. The link is up here. Let's review a bit before we go further. What is penjodoh bilangan? Penjodoh bilangan is a word that is used to count or to group countable things. In short, it is similar to noun classifier in English. Today, we will learn two penjodoh bilangan. The first one is buah, buah. And the second one is biji, biji. The literal meaning of buah is fruit and the literal meaning of biji is seed. However, when both of them is used as a noun classifier or penjodoh bilangan, this literal meaning is not used. Before we proceed, I really need your help to share this video, like, do leave some comments for me to motivate me to do more quality videos like this. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would be very grateful if you do. Terima kasih. Let's study the first penjodoh bilangan, which is buah. Buah. This penjodoh bilangan, or noun classifier, can be used to group big things, location, building, vehicles, and etc. They don't necessarily need to be in a certain shape. They just need to be big. Let's look at the things that are grouped under this penjodoh bilangan or noun classifier buah. I have listed out a few samples and they are kereta, kereta, car, kerusi, kerusi, chair, buku, buku, book, rumah, rumah, house, Major, major, table, basikal, basikal, bicycle. The way that penjodoh bilangan or noun classifier is used is related closely with numbers. You cannot leave out the numbers when you want to use penjodoh bilangan. If you haven't studied numbers yet, I recommend that you study that first before proceeding with penjodoh bilangan. The link is above. If you are still lost and confused, don't worry. Now you will see some sample sentences and I hope that you will have better understanding. Okay, the first example is for kereta. Kereta, which means car. Sebuah kereta. Sebuah kereta, a car. Dua buah kereta, dua buah kereta, two cars. Tiga buah kereta, tiga buah kereta, three cars. Of course, if you don't want to insert the penjodoh bilangan in your phrase or sentence, that would be okay as well, colloquially. But you will not sound as fluent as a Malay speaker. For example, satu kereta, satu kereta, a car or one car, dua kereta, dua kereta, two cars, tiga kereta, tiga kereta, three cars. Do you realize that when the item is in plural, 
There is no added S like in English to show that the item is more than one. In Malay, you just need to attach the numbers to the item to make it plural. Dua kereta to mean two cars, and so on. Let's move on to the next item, which is kerusi. Kerusi, which means chair. Sebuah kerusi. Sebuah kerusi. A chair. Lima buah kerusi. Lima buah kerusi. Five chairs. Enam buah kerusi. Enam buah kerusi. Six chairs. The next item is buku. Buku, which means book. Sebuah buku. Sebuah buku. A book. Tujuh buah buku. Tujuh buah buku. Seven books. Lapan buah buku. Lapan buah buku. Eight books. Next item is rumah. Rumah, which means house. Sebuah rumah. Sebuah rumah. A house. Sembilan buah rumah. Sembilan buah rumah. Nine houses. Sepuluh buah rumah. Sepuluh buah rumah. Ten houses. Let's move on to the next penjodoh bilangan which is biji. Biji. Generally, biji is used to group or count small things which has a round or circular shape. The items that use biji as penjodo bilangan or noun classifier are as followed. There are more than these, but here in this lesson, I only mention a few. The first item is cawan. Cawan, cup. Bola, bola, ball. Gula, 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 gula. Sweets or candy. Labu, labu, pumpkin. Telo, telo, egg. And lastly, apple, apple, apple. Let's apply the penjodo bilangan or noun classifier BG with these items. The first item is cawan, cawan, which means cup. Sebiji cawan, sebiji cawan, a cup. Sebelas biji cawan, sebelas biji cawan, eleven cups. Dua belas biji cawan, dua belas biji cawan, twelve cups. The next item is bola, bola, which means a ball. Sebiji bola, sebiji bola, a ball. Tiga belas biji bola, tiga belas biji bola, thirteen balls. Empat belas biji bola. Empat belas biji bola. Fourteen balls. The next item is gula-gula. Gula-gula, which means sweets or candy. Sebiji gula-gula. Sebiji gula-gula. A candy. Lima belas biji gula-gula. Lima belas biji gula-gula. Fifteen candies. Enam belas biji gula-gula. Enam belas biji gula-gula. Sixteen candies. And the last example for penjodoh bilangan biji is telo. Telo, which means egg. Sebiji telo. Sebiji telo. An egg. Tujuh belas biji telo. Tujuh belas biji telo. Seventeen eggs. Lapan belas biji telo. Lapan belas biji telo. Eighteen eggs.
Colloquially, the Punjodo bilangan buah is interchangeable with biji. Some people would use biji to group the items which grammatically is appropriate with the Punjodo bilangan buah. As an example, Dia ada dua buah kereta. Dia ada dua buah kereta. But colloquially, some people would say, Dia ada dua biji kereta. Dia ada dua biji kereta. Both sentences mean, He or she has two cars. So, just remind yourself that the penjoda bilangan buah and biji are interchangeable sometimes in Malay. Let's look at another example. If someone asks you, how many houses do you have? How many houses do you have? In Malay, you could translate it in three ways. All is used daily. But the last one is quite common colloquially. The first one, Awa ada berapa banyak rumah? Awa ada berapa banyak rumah? Awa ada berapa buah rumah? Awa ada berapa buah rumah? Colloquially, Awa ada berapa biji rumah? Awa ada berapa biji rumah? To answer that question, Saya ada dua puluh buah rumah. Saya ada dua puluh buah rumah. Or colloquially, using penjodoh bilangan biji, saya ada dua puluh biji rumah. Saya ada dua puluh biji rumah. Both sentences mean, I have twenty houses. The examples are when the penjodoh bilangan buah is interchanged with BG. However, can we do the opposite, which is using the items that are more appropriate with the penjodo bilangan BG and then putting penjodo bilangan buah in its place? Unfortunately, this is not practiced colloquially. The items that is classified by penjodo bilangan BG will always stay with penjodo bilangan BG. We could not use penjodo bilangan buah in its place. For example, observe these sentences. Banyaknya buah durian. Banyaknya buah durian. Berapa biji semua ni? Berapa biji semua ni? So many durians. How many all of this? Let's study the first sentence. Banyaknya buah durian. Banyak means many. Banyaknya, which is the word banyak with the suffix nya, is used to emphasize the word banyak. And in English, we use the word so. Banyaknya is translated as so many. The word buah here does not function as a penjodo bilangan or noun classifier. Here, buah means fruit. And it refers to the durian, which is a fruit. Remember, in order to use penjodo bilangan or noun classifier, you need numbers. And in this sentence, there is no numbers being mentioned. The next sentence, Berapa biji semua ni? Berapa biji semua ni? Berapa means how many? Semua ni means all of these. And BG is not translated in English. But we have to mention the penjodo bilangan BG because it is used to classify round or circular shape items and in this case, the durian fruit. Can we replace the penjodo bilangan BG to buah? Berapa buah semua ni? Berapa buah semua ni? No, this is wrong. BG will always stay as BG. Remember the rule. Buah can be replaced with BG colloquially. But BG colloquially will always stay as BG. 
To answer the question of berapa biji semua ni? Berapa biji semua ni? Your friend might answer like this. Mana ada banyak? Mana ada banyak? Mana ada banyak? Cuma seratus biji je. Cuma seratus biji je. Cuma seratus biji je. Not that many. Just one hundred only. The phrase mana ada banyak is translated as not that many. Mana means where. Ada means to have or to be. Mana ada colloquially could mean no way, no way. In this case, it serves the purpose as a denial to the previous sentence. For example, like if you are familiar with the English phrase, no way Jose. Banyak means many. So when the person A says to the person B, Banyaknya buah durian. Banyaknya buah durian. He is surprised to see so many durian fruits in front of him. But the person B denies that statement by saying, Mana ada banyak? Mana ada banyak? Mana ada banyak? Then the person A asks the person B, Berapa biji semua ni? Berapa biji semua ni? Berapa biji semua ni? How many all of this? Person B says, Cuma seratus biji je. Cuma seratus biji je. Cuma seratus biji je. Just one hundred only. Cuma means just. And je is actually a colloquial version of Sahaja. Can we replace the penjodoh bilangan biji tu buah colloquially as in the sentence below? Cuma seratus buah je. Cuma seratus buah je. No, this is wrong. This is not correct. In this case, biji will always stay as biji, even though it is colloquial. To summarize this lesson, buah when used as penjodoh bilangan or noun classifier, it refers to big items, while BG is to classify small, rounded, and circular things. Colloquially, the penjodoh bilangan buah is sometimes interchanged with the penjodoh bilangan BG. However, if the item is initially classified by penjodoh bilangan biji, we do not interchange it with penjodoh bilangan buah colloquially. Phew, this lesson might sound or be complicated for some of you. But I believe there will be one day where you hear the Malay speakers use this penjodoh bilangan. I hope you have benefited from today's lesson and as usual, if you don't understand anything from the lesson, please write me a comment and I will answer them to my best abilities. Terima kasih sangat-sangat for always supporting I Learn Malay channel. Thank you so much and until next time, till we meet again, sampai jumpa lagi.